morning. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and get started again. Um, again, if you were in the auditorium for the presentation on healthy diet, I'm Laura Brown and I'm with the Tennessee Commission on Aging and Disability. Um, I'm the state long-term care ombudsman and I'm here to introduce our next session, which is Aging in Place, Safety and Prevention. And our presenter will be Ms. Becky Carter, the exec who is the Executive Director of Rebuilding Together Nashville. She first joined Rebuilding Together in 2006 as a volunteer coordinator at the Washington, D.C. Home Office. Having earned communications degrees from Colorado State University and Georgetown University, Becky was a natural fit for directing Rebuilding Together's national marketing and public relations efforts. In 2013, she was appointed Executive Director of Rebuilding Together Nashville where she is hard at work building a strong volunteer and support base to assist Nashville homeowners who are most in need. With no further ado, let's welcome Ms. Becky Carter. Thank you. All right. The man back there in the booth is going to tell me if he can't hear me, which, all right, you guys can all hear me. Okay, perfect. Um, well, thank you for having me. Um, number one, I'm always happy to meet with folks, and, and uh, this is... As you heard, my background's in communications, but with working through Rebuilding Together, I've really kind of started to have a passion about aging in place and just really trying to start a dialogue about it um, because we hear most... So Rebuilding Together works to uh, provide low-income homeowners with free home modifications and repairs. And quite often when we go into a home, what we hear is, I want to stay here. How can you help me stay in my house as I age? And so um, that's kind of where my passion for this came from. So. Um, I do have a PowerPoint. Um, just, I wanted to give a little shout out quickly to the partners and advisors and friends that we've had. This isn't something that Rebuilding Together has put together on their own, but um, we've been a national organization for close to 30 years, and over those 30 years have developed partnerships with uh, several folks when it comes to uh, healthy housing and aging in place. So, um, and also to the Weston Home Foundation, who in Nashville has been a great supporter of ours. So. Um, goals for today, I wanted you guys to learn a little bit about Rebuilding Together. Um, we're working on growing our program. Right now we primarily serve Davidson County, but we're working to try to get that expanded out. Um, and uh, I wanted to also, in addition to learning about Rebuilding Together, have a little bit of, com of a conversation, like I said, about making a plan and learning uh, about aging in place, and then look at some modification ideas for your home. So um, we won't look at everything. There's a lot out there on this topic, but we're going to look at some of the most basic stuff. So. Um, just a little bit about Rebuilding Together in the big picture. Um, there's 166 of us across the country. Um, like I said, we work with low-income homeowners uh, to provide free home repairs, and a lot of our population is seniors. So um, we, over the years, we've really developed a program that focuses on what we call safe at home. Um, so that's a little bit of our background. Um, Okay, aging in place. My parents didn't expect to show up in this presentation, but this is them. <laughs> um, I put that in here because they just turned 60, 61 now, I think they are. Um, and when I go home at Christmas, the conversation that we're quite often having is how are you adapting the house? They live in a tri-level house, so the bedrooms are on the third floor, the main living area is in the middle, and the laundry is all the way in the basement. Um, not normally, you know, when they were younger, not a huge issue. Uh, my mom started to, she has MS, so some of that has started to develop and, and uh, become more progressive as she's aged. So it's becoming more and more difficult for her to go up and down the stairs to get to laundry or get to the pantry or to do those things. And so, again, that's where some of my passion kind of comes from. So what I guess I wanted to talk to you guys about today and really, if you get nothing from this meeting other, and this uh, presentation other than getting the idea that you should go home and think about it, and look about your environment differently, so often what happens is that people wait until something happens to make a plan. So I'm waiting. My parents, I believe, for the catalyst will be once my mother has some sort of fall. She breaks a hip. She, you know, breaks an arm. There's been several incidences over the years, but they are having a hard time kind of digesting the fact that they may need to start to adapt where they're living. Because um, they don't, I guess they just, every, you want to feel young, right? So um, anyway, I put them in there because it's always a good reminder to me. And so we've kind of started to have the conversation because I know it's going to take me a very long time to move them across that, that spectrum and finally get them to the chance where they, they will actually probably have to move. A lot of modifications won't work well in a tri-level house for, for the types of things that my mom's facing. But um, 
Looking at aging in place, um, the definition is really the adaptation of the living environment for the um, intended to increase ease of use, safety, security, and independence. Um, we found through Rebuilding Together that um, by modifying your own space, the house that you've been paying towards or paid off over the years, it's also going to cost you less over time to adapt your own living space than to go into any sort of managed care. So um, as you look at that, it, it's better for you to start thinking about those things now and make those updates than to start planning for like a nursing home or some sort of assisted living facility. Um, and a lot, I put this last fact down here as far as decreasing falls. Uh, every 14 seconds, an older adult is treated for a fall in the emergency room. A fall is most often the precursor to some other health issue. So you, again, going back to like breaking hips, um, that can lead to a bunch of other things. And if you haven't thought about that and how you might adapt your living, ideally you can prevent it before it either happens. But once it happens, or if it happens, how are you going to adjust? So. Um, but let's get into, and if you guys have questions throughout this, feel free to ask. Um, so we're gonna just jump in a, to a couple of things. Um, my first thing, people love throw rugs. When I go into houses and we look at, at, at people's homes, um, you either wanna try to remove throw rugs, um, or if you can, secure them with a double-sided like sticky tape. Um, so this is at my house. Um, I've actually gone through and secured, that's on, like all a third, third to third of the rug and pinned down to the front door right as soon as you come in so that it's not such a hazard. Um, if you're carrying a lot of groceries or um, as you age, you, you know, may not be able to pick your feet up as well or you're having it, you get tired easily. Um, it just, it caught, you know, you can catch your foot and very easily result in a fall. So, um, so you want to apply a nonstick tape to that and like I said, either secure the throw rugs and try to reduce them or remove them altogether. Um, the other thing is removing carpet, um, if, especially if the carpet's a lot older. Um, most, some, a lot of the older houses will have a hardwood underfloor, so if you can take out the carpet, um, quite often if the carpet's been in the home for many, many years, it's gotten to where it's not so stretched and tight anymore, and it creates those little bumps. Those little bumps can cause falls as well, so if you can remove it, um, that's ideal. If not, you can get it restretched just to reduce that hazard so it's smooth again. Um, Carpet also carries a lot of allergens, so if you start to develop um, any sort of breathing issues as you get older, or um, it's good to just get it out because it holds on to a lot of stuff. So, and if you can get to some sort of hard for, hard surface, whether it's a, an artificial wood or a hardwood, um, that's a lot better long term because then if you do end up needing to use some sort of wheelchair or something to scoot, it's just it's already set up for that. Whereas things can get stuck on carpet and whatnot if you have that, it's not quite as easy to move across. So, I see some questioning. Is this all? It's all pretty basic. Yeah, I mean, cr yes, you could, but ideally you're removing the hazard that's going to make you trip. So, if we were in a house right here, like this cord right here could cause me to fall. If I can prevent the fall altogether, then I don't have to worry about the surface that I'm falling on. So, um,. But yes, you're right. It would it could potentially hurt a little bit more if you fell onto a hardwood. Um, lever handles. Um, that's something easier that you don't necessarily need to grip to be able to to open. Um, so it's a little bit better for um, folks that might have arthritis or um, you know it, it, you can adapt it very easily to be able to just and without very gripping tight or turning. Um, be able to enter and exit your home. Um, this happens to be on the outside of my house, uh, so I eventually will need to go back and apply these to all the interior doors um, and get that to, to be easier. Um, this one is just to start thinking about organizing for ease of use. So if you have, if you know you like something that you always use on the top shelf, starting to move that down. And, and starting to get things into places where you might be able to use it all at one level so that it's not necessarily, you're not stretching, you're not getting old, uh, you know, a step stool to step up. And most of this, again, is all about prevention. Because if you can prevent the fall or the injury, then it doesn't necessarily slip and slide into something else. So, um, for example, my grandmother, she was on oxygen, and one of the things we were constantly worried about is the, the cord that she used to go around the house, but it did eventually trip her up one night, and she hasn't 
been back out of the hospital since then just because that fall we weren't able to prevent it so anyway again going back to prevention so as you start to look at your kitchen and how you like things and how you arrange things thinking about if you have some the coffee pot that stays on the counter because you typically use that a lot if you have something else that you really like starting to put those things out where you can get to them and not necessarily have to go up or down terribly as you as you're either you know it gets more and more difficult to reach up or if it becomes difficult to kind of squat down to get to things um, adding additional lighting um, this sounds like a simple one but um, you can either add additional uh, lighting units and lighting fixtures just to make sure that you have enough light within your house um, again thinking about falls if you can't see something properly or can't see that there's enough light there maybe it's getting you know at dusk time it starts to get dark and you can't really see where you're going um, you want to make sure there's enough bright light to be able to to see where you are in your home and in in, in your bedroom um, or also as you start some of you might do crafts or things also just trying to make sure that you can see things that um, if you sit on the couch and read making sure there's a light right near there so your eyes don't get as stressed and as tired um, you can also work to provide color changes to distinguish surfaces so um, sometimes on stairs, you can put down little strips of colored, like tacky tape that allows you to know kind of you can see better where the depth is and where you're stepping as you're looking down. Um, work to reduce glare and do low gloss floor, flooring surfaces and then uh, window coverings to kind of help with uh, manage the light and how that works in your home. Oh, yes, an energy efficiency light bulb. Yes, okay, thank you. Um, the bathroom, so this is probably where the most injuries happen. Um, you would wanna look at installing grab bars if you need them. I have two slides actually on this. So um, I like this slide because what it shows here is this first photo shows, you wanna make sure that the, the modification actually goes to where it's gonna be useful. So if you hire somebody to come in and say put in a grab bar and they go in the bathroom and they put it where they think is most useful, if they haven't really talked you through it, it may or may not work. So you wanna make sure that you're talking to them and having a conversation. If you look in this first picture that you see, she's showing how she might normally get out of the bathtub and that's how she's leveraging. She's leaning on that wall. So they wanna put the grab bar right in that same spot. If they had come and put it, you know, you sometimes see them over here against the wall and that's not necessarily helping, maybe creating more of a hazard if you're having to reach over to then get in. So just thinking through some of those things logically. Um, and at the end, I'm gonna show you a slide. You have a lot of really great resources. There's a lot of occupational therapists that can come in and kind of help you diagnose what specifically for your home you might need. So, um, and these things aren't necessarily limited to age. I have grab bars in my bathroom as well, just because I think it's helpful. Um, so from what I understand, <laughs> um, if you're going to put it in the studs, you want that you want the grab bar to go into the stud because that's where it's got the most support. The back blocking is, I believe, some piece that they can put behind, like if they were going to cut into the drywall, essentially create a little piece in there that either gets attached to the studs or goes behind the drywall to give it extra, extra pull so that it's not necessarily just going to pull right out of the drywall. If you if you if it's not installed properly, it's not going to do you much good. Because if you really have to use that grab bar, you want to make sure that you can fully put your weight on it um, and that it's accurately and best anchored so that you can use it. Um, they also come in a lot of different styles right now. So I point that out because sometimes people are timid to put them in the bathroom because they may not want the big silver grab bars. But Lowe's or Home Depot offers a wide variety of properly sized and appropriate grab bars that you can pick out something that's both attractive and uh, functional. So. Um, but yes, that's what that means. Thank you for asking. Um, so there's a couple different things. This is a different bathroom. Um, other things that you might want to look at um, is either changing out the toilet um, to being a little bit higher level. Um, sometimes that can be expensive, so you, it adds an extra two and a half inches, so you don't have to go as far with up and down. Um, you can also get um, relatively inexpensively a seat lifter. Um, I think Walmart.com sells them or Amazon. That that's really easy. You can just add that to the 
to the commode and uh, it makes it easier again to get up and down. Um, in this other one, they've actually lowered the shower head so that you can sit on the shower chair there um, and then you know just reach over and be able to bathe while you're sitting. Um, and they've removed the shower doors and left a curtain. So there's no extra, again, going back to kind of removing things that could cause incidents. Um, and then this last down here with the toilet paper, it seems relatively simple, but removing that tiny spring thing, if you have dexterity issues or um, you know, aren't able to kind of get that little spring squished, then, then that's a lot easier to use just as far as on and off. So are there any other questions? Again, some of this is really, really basic and stuff that you wouldn't necessarily think is like groundbreaking, but it's surprising how many homes we go into and, and it's just not done. I think um, it's really, I mean, it's like I said, I've started to make a lot of the things at my house and, and just as a, I just turned 35, so it's so much, it's a lot easier. Um, knowing that these things will be in place and that I can have my mom over. Um, so this is actually the front of my house and one thing that is not good for my mother, but um, handrails on front porches. Um, you need at least one secure handrail on any sort of step. Um, if you're getting, this is only three steps. I don't think I have the photo in this slide, but if you're getting to like a staircase, you might want to consider at least one handrail and if it's, um, if you find yourself going up and down the stairs with the handrail and doing a lot of wall leaning, um, you might want to put in two to make sure that it's secure and just cause your stairs are a huge problem. But uh, making sure you get a handrail on that, you can actually buy pieces um, or have a handyman install a, a very easy railing for like three steps like that at Lowe's. Um, what was the other thing here? The other thing I was going to point out here too would be lighting. I have a pretty bright light there on the front of the porch just so that I can see where I'm going when I'm outside and coming home at night that there's plenty of light to be able to not only get up and down the stairs but to see where I'm going. Um, so <laughs> that I need to schedule. So I have not scheduled it but I do think about it quite often because I go up and down those stairs with the whole load of groceries, right? We're going to always, we always want to make it in one trip. I will eventually fall off that porch. So yes, I should schedule that. Um, wheelchair ramps and accessibility. This is, this is probably the biggest thing that we get called for, for at Rebuilding Together. Um, again, and this is one of those things that you don't really need it until you need it, but it's something that you might want to at least put some consideration around should you ever need it. So if you've gone into the hospital, you've had that fall, um, something's happened, and now you need to come home and use that wheelchair for, for recovery, or you need to use a walker. Those three steps that you saw from the front of my house would be a huge problem. Um, it's incredibly difficult to get up and down those if you were using any sort of wheelchair. So um, just again, everybody in this room is gonna stay healthy and it's gonna, we're not gonna have to think about wheelchair ramps, but before you get it, should you need it, you wanna consider uh, what the best solution is. So, you know, like we just talked about, do you actually need a wheelchair ramp? if it comes to that point, or would putting in the two railings be enough? How does that person feel about it um, as you're diagnosing the situation? Um, how do you feel about it personally? Can it signal disability or vulnerability? Possibly, but um, I don't, cons I usually, that's kind of lower on my list when it comes to things to think about, but it's something that folks do think about. Um, would it affect the resale value of your house? Potentially, but again, if you're planning on aging in place and staying in your home, that may not matter to you. Um, the family may not think it looks good. There's a variety of ways you could do this. You could put it at the back of the house or the front of the house, um, thinking about the style that you may eventually want. Um, making sure that it's done right. Um, you want the run to rise to be one foot for every, what is it? One, one inch for every foot <laughs> of rise. Um, so it, you want it to be done right so that the slope is right. If you get it too steep, it's more dangerous. So make sure that you work with a handyman that knows exactly how to do that. And then also making sure that you're putting down grippers. Uh, you can get some gripping tape that goes on every board should you use a wood ramp that provides some traction. Um, down here it says, does you know get input from your family and from an OT or other folks that you know that might be able to uh, give you advice on a ramp. And then also check out resources on designs. They also make some really nice um, aluminum wheelchair ramps that you can take in and out now that um, I think they tend to be a little bit more pricey than like a wood ramp if you were just to build that and that was permanent and stayed there but the aluminum ramps can come and go so for example if you were worried about the resale value of your house you could put up the, the 
temporary aluminum ramp that they set up. And then should you get ready to move, uh, you can take that off. And, and uh, there's a, actually a company called Amp, Amp Ramp that just rents them to you too. So they'll come and pick it back up when it's done. So um, anyway, just things to think about. Because um, we get the most calls on wheelchair ramps after things, after folks have fallen and they've been in their house for three or four months and want to actually try to leave. So, um, and may or may not have friends that can come help them get up and down those stairs. Let's see, we talked about some of these, but um, we have, okay, so this is kind of the other couple of things that just go through impacting safety. Removing clutter. Um, starting to get down and decrease on knickknacks or um, stacks of books or thinking about a place if you have stairs in your home where um, you might do the thing that we did in my family where you put it at the bottom of the stairs so that you'll get it eventually and take it upstairs, making sure that you're clearing all that stuff out. Um, I've seen these videos where they have like, you know, you're carrying the laundry and you've put the stack of books to take back downstairs and you step on those books because you're not really paying attention and then you've caused a fall. So making sure you're kind of starting to decrease clutter. Um, just in and around the house as a whole. Um, that's hugely important. Um, again, talking about the scatter rugs and making sure you're securing those or getting rid of them all together. Um, adding smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors, making sure those are working. Uh, moving wires out of pathways. So, um, you know, if you're thinking about, say, for example, the lighting fixture example, um, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, you wouldn't, might be creating more of a hazard, for example, if you plugged it in back there and just got a second lamp and set it out here, now you've created a cord, like should, could we add another plug over here that you might be able to just plug it in right there and make it a lot easier and not have a cord dragged across the way. So you're adding light, but you're creating a trip hazard by putting the cord across the room, so just kind of thinking about cords and how things, how your pathways, are those pathways clear? Um, installing a doorbell so that you can better hear, um, you know, if somebody's at the door or, or, or needs to come in. Uh, large house numbers for emergency situations or making sure that you have your number on your curb. Um, I don't remember which conference I was at a few years ago, but they talked about one of, especially in some of the more rural parts of town, that a huge thing for them is sometimes they just can't find, if a first responder has to come, they can't find the property because they don't, can't see the number. So making sure that you have something out there that's nice and large that says this is, you know, 6120 Morrow Road, this is my address, so that they can see it, whether that's on a mailbox or on a curb. Um, and then, of course, hopefully it's reflective or there's got enough light that they can actually see it. So that's a big thing in lower income neighborhoods too, is just making sure that stuff is kept up. Because again, if the responders can't find the house and in those delicate you know, few seconds where you might need somebody, that's important. Um, portable phones, whoops. Portable phones, making sure that you have, um, can get to that. So that if you, you know, maybe having a phone in multiple rooms if you need it. Um, so that if there is some sort of situation, you can get to it quickly versus having to go down to the kitchen or wherever the phone may have been before. Um, let's see. Oh, sturdy door poles. Um, I don't really remember exactly what that one is, but, um, I think that's basically just making sure that everything's set up so that you can adequately put weight on any sort of door if you're leaning on it to get in and out of the house. Um, so where to go for more information? Like I said, I am... The biggest thing I wanted to do today was give you guys a few of the basics on fall prevention, because that's really what a lot of this aging in place goes around, um, and a lot of where a lot of the conversation sits. But here are the same folks that we've talked about. I talked about partnering with at the beginning. Um, they're also the places that you can go for more information. So um, the National Center for Healthy Housing, that's all around healthy housing, looking at things um, when it comes to general health of your home, keeping things dry, keeping things clean, keeping things ventilated. Um, that's much on the other side of our work. But AARP, the Home Safety Council, or this Occupational Therapy Association are really good organizations should you need more help on um, aging in place and simple modifications that you can make.